Okay, it's gonna work, guys. Look, I'm just gonna hop out of their server, run it locally, because it's gonna work. We're gonna get a flag right here. Promise you. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be so embarrassed. But I'm like 99.999999% sure we're gonna get a flag here. Fuck yeah. Flag, motherfuckers! Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome to the second video in my How To Hack series. If you're new here, this is just a series where I take moments from my stream where I explain different hacks I do while playing and practicing CTF, and I condense them into short videos so that you can see how I carry out an attack without having to watch an entire stream. Um, and the stream videos go away after a few weeks anyways, so I thought this would be a good way to kind of preserve the really informative parts of those streams. So this challenge is Echo 2 from Ponable.kr. And Echo 1 I did in the last video, so if you want to check that out first, then go and check for the first video in this series. Now, Echo 2, my solution, I think is pretty cool. It's a three-stage exploit, so I have four different pieces of shell code. The first two comprise the first stage, and then two other stages. Um, it turns out I only used one of the bugs in this challenge. There was a second bug, a format string vulnerability, and for some reason I completely overlooked it. With that vulnerability, I could have done just a one-stage attack, and it would have been really clean and really simple. But to be honest, I'm actually kind of glad that I missed that bug because it caused me to get creative and solve the challenge in a way that wasn't intended using only one of the bugs. And I'm not sure how many other people have done that. It's not like insanely complex to do it with only one bug, but it's definitely harder than if you see both of the bugs. So in one respect, I was a noob for missing one of the bugs, but in the other respect, uh, I had a lot of fun and uh, was able to do a more complex solve than was expected. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's go over what the fuck we just did. We have this application. We need to find a way to exploit it. It gives us three options. Boff Echo, FSB Echo, UAF Echo. Boff Echo, it's not implemented. So version one of this challenge it was implemented and we had to exploit it using only this. Now this is no longer implemented so we have FSB echo and UAF echo. Let's look at these one at a time. So what FSB is going to do, it's going to look into this uh, global thing and it's going to go OX18 or 24 bytes into it and then it's going to call a function from that location passing what this global points to as the parameter. So this callbacks underscore buff underscore pointer, it's a pointer to a structure, and that structure looks like this. 24 characters for name, uh, eight bytes for the address of the greetings funk, and eight bytes for the address of the bye bye funk. Cool. So it's just gonna call the greetings function here with the address of the name as the parameter. Then it's going to call get input. It's going to read 20 bytes from us onto the stack. We have, or 32 bytes from us, OX20, uh, onto the stack. We don't have any overflow, so we can't really use this as an attack. Then it's just going to take whatever we give it. It's going to print it back to us, and then it's going to call uh, the bye bye function, or the, yeah, bye bye. And then it's going to return. UAF is going to do the same thing. But instead of putting allocating memory on the stack, it's going to allocate it on the heap. So it's going to use malloc. It's going to execute the same amount of bytes, 32. It's going to use git input to read 32 bytes. It's going to spit it back to us using puts. And then it's going to free it up, right? So there's nothing we can attack right here. However, we have a use after free. We can make this a use after free. So look. If we say exit, option number four, we fall down to here, and then we fall down to here, and then we fall into cleanup. Cleanup takes the memory at that call buffs, buffs pointer, and it frees it. After cleaning up and freeing the memory, it says, are you sure you want to exit? And we can say no. If we say no, we fall to the left, and then we fall down to here, and then we follow this blue line, and we end up back here, back in the code. So now, this buffer right here that stores name 
and then greetings functions and then bye bye functions the code is still using this this structure right it's still using it but it's freed the memory so now if we use malloc again we can get it to malloc something over this memory and then we can write to this memory right so we have that in this uaf echo we have ox 20 bytes that we malloc right 32 bytes that we malloc and that gives us overflow into here however wait really What am I missing? Oh yeah, no, that's right. So we can read up to 32 bytes, which means we can overflow greetings func. We cannot overflow bye bye func, however. So we overflow greetings function. We can't overflow bye bye function because this starts at offset 32 and we only have 32 bytes. So we can only overwrite up to this at plus 24, right? So what happens, this calls malloc 32 bytes. It lands those 32 bytes over these bytes right here that the application's still using for other things. One of those is a function pointer. And if we control that function pointer, well, we, we can make it execute code, right? So how the fuck do we actually weaponize it? So there's one more thing we have to know about the code of this application when we're talking about weaponizing it, that it takes the four, four bytes from our name, the first four bytes of our name, and puts on them in this global ID right here. This is very important. Um, the attack I have would not work without this, these four bytes, right? And we know the address of these four bytes, which is why it's so important. With ASLR enabled, like, yeah, we can control, we can overwrite this, address with some code to call, with address of some function or code that we want it to call, right? But that's not gonna do anything if we don't know what the address is, right? So if we want to put our own code there, we need a way to locate our code. So we can write four bytes of code here that can help us locate our code and then go execute our real code and then we can use this address because we know of it since this memory is executable. Okay, so we know all of this. Let's go through the attack. So what I put in the ID field, this trampoline, I'm gonna put add AL8 jump RIX. So add AL8, it's just gonna add eight bytes and then it's gonna to RIX and then it's gonna jump to it. So let's look at the code and understand what that means. If we look at where these are being called, we call RDX, right? But RIX will be the address of our buffer. Our entire buffer, this guy right here, RIX will point to this. We have one problem though. The first eight bytes of the buffer get overwritten by the memory allocator. So you free the memory and the memory allocator puts some value on those first eight bytes to help it identify that memory. Basically, it's put into like a linked list. So it's using those first eight bytes for something. So we can't use these first eight bytes. Our shellcode has to be in between, you have the first eight bytes and then the shellcode until the 24th byte. So you only have 16 bytes for the shellcode, which isn't enough to do what we need, right? So what we end up doing Add AL8, jump RIX, it's just skipping the first eight bytes and jumping to our 16 byte shellcode is what the trampoline's doing. So we put a first stage there. Um, so inside that shellcode that we jump to, first we're just gonna say add RDI OX20, move RDI RDX and return. So RDI points to the beginning of the structure right here. Right? So then when we add OX20 to it, we're adding 32 to it, which makes it point to right here. And then in this memory slot, we're moving RDX. Well, what does RDX point to? RDX points to 
our ID slot where this is, right? So effectively, the first stage of our attack overwrites greetings function with the address of our trampoline. And then that allows us to jump into the shellcode. The shellcode then overwrites bye bye function with the address of our trampoline as well. So now when we get to the bye bye function, we're also going to be able to call shellcode. That's the first stage. Now the second stage is now that the by this you'll see why this is important in a second. So the second stage, we're just gonna do we're gonna pop RDX, right? Which is just gonna put the return address in RDX. That's that'll tell us what called our shellcode. How did we get to our shellcode? We'll compare it to this 880. So if we look at FSB, this will this guy right here will call bye bye function, right? And the return address will be this 400880, right? What that means, we're checking if the return address is here. If the return address isn't there, then we're just going to do a normal return, jump RDX. We're going to basically do nothing. This turns into just a bounce. The trampoline bounces into the shellcode, and the shellcode just bounces back out. It doesn't do anything. Except if we are at that 880, we're going to subtract 20, OX20, so 32 from RBP, and then we're going to jump to RBP. Why is that? Well, look here. This get input, like we said before, it's reading 32 bytes onto the stack and it's reading them to rbp minus ox20 rbp minus 32 and that's where the final stage the third stage comes in this stage executes slash bin slash sh which gives us the shell and allows us to run shell commands as you can see here how i'm just running commands on the server right that's what this third stage does so what ends up happening here into this buffer we put this third stage when it reads our input and then we fall down here and we call our shellcode here. The shellcode sees that the return address has this 880 or 0880 as the final word of it which tells it that it's being called after our shellcode's in place. If it's called before it'll get called here too but it won't see the right return address so it'll do nothing. Then we put our shellcode in place. It'll see our shellcodes in place. So then it will go and execute the code at RBP minus OX20, which is our shellcode. And boom, we fucking win. G fucking G. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, feel free to give me a thumbs down. If you want to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. Links are down in the description. Twitch is great. You can see the stuff live. Much more content if that's your thing. If not, I get it. Uh, check out my book. It's called Game Hacking, Developing Autonomous Bots for Online Games. And hey, I'll see you next time.